How do you apply for a home loan? How do you get a mortgage? What's involved in the process? What documents are needed? What kind of employment do you need? What kind of down payment? How about credit scores? Well, in today's video, we're gonna dive into this process in more detail. If you're watching this video, you're probably a first time home buyer new to the home buying process. And I wanna be clear here, getting a home loan, getting a mortgage is the foundation of the home buying process. It is the most important piece. So in today's video, I wanna walk you through what that process looks like so you know exactly what you're going to go through in order to get pre-approved to buy a home. My name is Jeb Smith. I'm a real estate broker here in Southern California, and I've helped many, many first-time home buyers get into property. And I often walk home buyers through this process. So I wanna take a little bit of time and simplify it for you so you know exactly what documents you need, how much employment you need, down payment, credit scores, all of that stuff, so that you can plan accordingly if you're looking to buy a home. Now, the very first thing you're going to do in the process of getting a home loan or getting a mortgage is you need to talk to a mortgage professional, a mortgage expert. Now, many people often reach out and say, well, what if I contacted a real estate agent first? Is that okay? It's absolutely okay to talk to a real estate agent first, but if you reached out to me as a home buyer that hadn't been pre-approved, the very first thing I'm going to do is refer you to a mortgage professional, a mortgage expert to walk you through the process of pre-approval. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about what that looks like, but I'm gonna tell you why you need to talk to that mortgage professional up front. It's because they're going to ask you a series of questions. They're gonna ask you about your employment. They're gonna ask you about things like down payment and credit scores to see if you're even eligible to buy a home. There's a lot of people out there that want to be home buyers, that want to be homeowners, but because of employment or because of credit scores or because of a lack of down payment, they're just not in a position to buy a home. So before you go out and start gathering documents or filling out loan applications online or having your credit scores run, it's a good idea to have that conversation with a mortgage professional just to see if you're a candidate to buy a property. We're currently in an environment where things are moving very, very fast, and you need to have an idea of not only what the housing market's doing, but what is required from your side in order to buy a home. So having that conversation with a lender up front will let you know if you're even a candidate to buy a home. Now, if you talk to you know a mortgage professional and they say, no, you can't buy a home because of a lack of employment or a lack of down payment or whatever the reason, they should be able to give you some advice, some things that you need to work on in order to put yourself in a position to buy a home. Now, one of the questions that often comes up is, you know, I'm not looking to buy a house for six or eight months. When should I get pre-approved? When should I have this conversation? I would say as soon as you are thinking about it. If you're six months out, eight months out, that's okay. It's good to have the conversation now walk through those steps so that if you aren't in a position to buy right now, you have things that you can work on to put yourself in a position if it is six or eight months from now. Maybe you need to work on your credit scores. Maybe you need to work on saving a little bit more money for your down payment. Either way, having that conversation upfront with a mortgage lender will put you in the best spot to get pre-approved. Now the next two steps can happen in any order you want. Uh, either way, they both need to happen. So you can you know, interchange two and three um, and make three first or two first, but nevertheless, you need to start gathering documents. If you're a wage employee, if you get a paycheck every month from your employer, you're going to need your last two years of W-2s. If you're self-employed or if you own other property, investment property, you're also going to need your full tax return. That's all pages of your tax return. If you're self-employed, you're also going to need your full business tax returns. That's for two years. So if you're just a wage earner, you just need the W-2s. If you're self-employed or own investment property, you're going to need those tax returns in addition to W-2s if you make, you know, if you get paid uh, you know, via salary as well. In addition to that, you're going to need two months of bank statements, not just your transaction history online. You actually need to go online and print out the actual copy of your bank statement. It's going to have your name on it. It's going to have your account number. It's going to have the transaction history. And in that document, there's likely to be a couple of pages in there at the end that are blank. 
the lender wants all pages of those documents and they need a two-month history. So if you have a checking account, a savings account, a money market account, whatever, they need two months history of all of those accounts. Now, maybe you're in luck. Maybe all of those accounts are on one statement and you just need the one statement. But in many cases, they're not. You have different statements, so they need a copy of every one of those statements. In addition to that, if you have a 401k, if you have an IRA, any sort of investment accounts, if you're using or you are putting that money as part of your assets on the loan application, which is what we're going to talk about next, you're going to need to document those assets, which means they need a two-month history or a quarterly statement showing you know, that account statement, and they need all pages of that as well. Now, let's say you're getting a gift for a down payment. You don't actually have the money in your account for the down payment and or the closing costs. You're going to need some sort of gift letter, a copy of you know the statement of where that money's coming from. So say you're getting a gift from a parent. They're giving you, say, $10,000 towards the down payment or towards closing costs. You're going to need to get a gift letter from your parent along with a copy of their statement, where that money's coming from, so that the lender can see that the money is there and, and you know where the account, where it's being documented from. In addition to having a copy of your driver's license, most lenders are going to want to see a copy of your driver's license as well. And that's going to put us into the third step. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can do the third step first or after the fact, but the third step is going to be filling out the loan application. Many lenders these days have a loan application online. It's also called a 1003. You can fill out this document online, Occasionally, it gets sent to you. You fill it out manually. Either way, this document is going to ask you questions like your name, your social security number. These are things you have to provide. It's going to ask you, you know, your current address, how long you've lived there. If you lived at that address for less than two years, you're going to have to document where you lived prior to that. So they need a two-year history of where you've lived. In addition to that, they're going to ask you employment information. Employment information is also going to be similar to, to the residents. They also need a two-year history of where you've worked, how much money you've made. So you're going to fill out this information online. And when they're asking for salary or if they're asking for monthly income here, you're putting your gross monthly income before taxes. That's how much you're filling out. But they're going to ask you, you know, employment information. They're going to need phone numbers on there. They're going to need, you know, how much money you make how much money you have in the bank, assets, all of this stuff. That's why it's helpful to gather these documents up front so that when you're filling out the loan application, you have all the information right in front of you to fill out that application. Now, if you do fill out the application and don't have some of this information and provide it with the lender, the lender's likely to fill it out for you or help you fill it out. But nonetheless, it's better to come prepared and make sure that you have all the information up front. That way, the lender can be quick in helping you make the decision. But once you fill out that loan application, you're going to sign the document. There's also going to be a couple of other documents that are attached to that loan application. One is going to give the lender the authorization to run your credit. Now, you've provided your Social Security number. The lender is going to want to run your credit score because they need to see what your credit scores are and what debts are showing up on your credit report. This is going to help them determine your debt to income ratio. And that's how they can tell how much home you can afford. So once you fill out this loan application, they're likely going to send you a link, uh, a secure link where you can upload these documents online. Maybe you're meeting with a bank or, or a credit union up front and you can bring these documents directly into them. Either way, you're going to need those documents that we spoke about earlier. That's how they verify the information that you've put on the loan application. If you just fill out a loan application and have them run your credit and never actually provide any documents, that's not a pre-approval. That's a pre-qualification. That's just having a conversation. In order to buy a home, you need a full pre-approval. And the pre-approval not only secures yourself, gives you, you know, security knowing that you're approved, it also helps your realtor know that you're approved, which prevents any potential heartache down the road if you're making offers and find out that you know something wasn't done correctly or documents weren't provided and you end up not being able to qualify. So making sure that you document everything up front you know, gives you the security in knowing that you can go out shopping for homes and not having to worry about not qualifying. Now, if you're currently wondering, how do you find a lender? How do I fill out this loan application? Where do I send these documents? You know, your bank 
your credit union, getting a referral are all good places to start. Now, with that said, I'm a little bit biased. I think mortgage brokers are better because mortgage brokers have access to more programs. You might go into your bank or your credit union and not qualify because they only do low programs that fit inside of a certain box. Maybe you're outside of that box because your debt to income ratio is a little bit high. Maybe your credit scores are a little bit lower, or maybe they only do certain types of programs. Therefore, they say, well, we can't qualify. You can't get approved for a home loan. Well, brokers have access to multiple banks, to multiple credit unions, to multiple direct lenders. They have access you know, to shopping your loan. If you don't qualify with one lender, they can refer it to another lender or send it to another lender to see if you qualify. So their guidelines, they have a wider range in their guidelines. And that's why I recommend a mortgage broker. Now, if you don't have one, you need one, do me a favor, click on the link below. As a mortgage broker for over 10 years, I have a lot of contacts out there all across the country, happy to put you in touch with someone that I know does a good job. So that's a good place to start. And if you don't wanna go there, you don't trust it, get a referral from a friend, that's also a good place to start. But no, got your best interest in mind, you can click that link and I'll definitely connect you. So now that you've been connected to a mortgage professional, you've filled out the application online, you've provided the documents, they've ran your credit, what's next? Well, they're gonna analyze this information. They're gonna go and run it through their systems, they're gonna look at your down payment, and they're gonna say, hey, these are the programs that you qualify for. They should come back with multiple programs compared against one another to show you exactly how much you qualify for, what your payment options are, you know, with regards to monthly payment, how much money you would need for closing costs, all of this information, that's part of the pre-approval process. And from there, you can decide on which program you're gonna use, how much money you're gonna put down, and start shopping for homes. Now, some of the most common questions I get when going through this process is how much employment do I need? Can I be on my job for, you know, one year, or do I need to be on it for two years? Most lenders wanna see a two-year history of employment. Now that doesn't mean you have to be with the same employer for two years, just means you need to be in the same line of work, if you will. So if you're a wage earner, if you get a paycheck every month, part of a salary, if you will, lenders wanna see a two year history of you getting that. They don't wanna see you go from a wage earner to a self-employed borrower, you know, where you are working for someone else and now all of a sudden you're self-employed unless you have a two year history of that. And you know it's easier to go from self-employed to a wage earner, but typically you still need to have a two-year history of work. In addition to that, credit scores. What credit scores do you need? Well, there are loan programs out there like FHA that allow you to have credit scores as low as 500. With credit scores like 500 though, you need a lot of contributing factors. Factors like you know a large down payment, factors like low debt to income ratio, things like that in order to get approved. But FHA also does a 3.5% down payment with a 580 credit score. Again, you also need contributing factors with that. What I'm getting at here is even with lower credit scores, there are loan programs out there for you. Now, if you don't have a down payment, that's a little bit more difficult. Now, if you're a veteran, someone that served in the military, you have an option of a VA loan, which requires a zero down payment with regards to buying a home. But other loan programs out there, many of them require some sort of down payment. Now, depending on where you're located in the country, what county, what city you live in, there may be some options for you know grants or local programs that will help you with a down payment. But many states like California that used to have down payment assistance programs, you know, they're essentially gone because of budget restrictions and what have you. That was the first thing eliminated. So depending on what state you're located in, you might have more options with regards to down payment assistance. States like Texas have a lot. States like Georgia have a lot of down payment assistance programs. So you need to make sure you're working with a lender in those states that understand you know, down payment assistance, are aware of the different programs. But outside of down payment assistance, you know, the least amount that you can put down in order to buy a home is 3% using a conventional loan and 3.5% using FHA. And FHA typically is the better loan when putting a lower down payment like that. But a lender can walk you through that process. So, so after watching this, you're thinking that you do want to buy a home. Maybe FHA is the direction you want to go. Where do you start on FHA? What's required? Do me a favor, check out this video here. I go into FHA loan requirements in more detail. But for now, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I appreciate the support. Hope to see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.